Yo, and thanks for tuning in to Commercial Drones FM. This is your last reminder to check out the Commercial UAV Expo in Las Vegas, Nevada in just a couple of weeks from now. It's from October 1st to the 3rd. So I'll be there, excited as usual to learn all about the latest updates in the industry, hear from the great speakers, chat with the exhibitors, and just kind of be walking around floating. I'm going to be hosting also a little poolside cabana with some drinks one of the nights after the show, so be sure to stop by that at the West Gate. Um, I'm going to have a microphone and I'll be asking for your thoughts, so hopefully you can you know, get your voice and your thoughts uh, onto the podcast after you've had a few. Uh, so again, it's October 1st to the 3rd in Las Vegas, Nevada. Snag your ticket now at expouav.com. See you there. Welcome to commercialdrones.fm, the podcast that explores the commercial drone industry, the people who power it, and the concepts that drive it. I'm your host, Ian Smith. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Commercial Drones FM. I'm sitting down in San Francisco with Jean Thomas Salette. He is the Chief Strategy and Product Officer for Parrot Business Solutions, whom you may know a little company called Sensefly is a part of. So, welcome to the show. Welcome to Commercial Drones FM, Jean Thomas. Thank you for having me, Ian. My pleasure. And so we're going to just make this easier. We're going to call you JT. So Jean that's Thomas right. is now JT. So that's what we'll refer to you as uh, during the podcast. So thank you so much again for coming and for having me here at the Parrot office um, in San Francisco. Now, can you just kick this off? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into drones and what it is that you do at Parrot and, and how it's relevant for the commercial drone industry? So yeah, currently I'm I'm responsible at the at the Parrot Group for the strategy of our B2B business, as well as the the product management and the customer experience of our B2B drone products. So especially uh, the Parrot products uh, in B2B and the Sensefly products in B2B. Uh, so how did I come to there? That's actually it's actually a long story, but uh, I think always I've I've really enjoyed technology since since growing up and. Uh, I've really had the, the, the mindset of technology is there to make our lives easier and to make work and things like that more efficient. That was really the driving force. That's why I went to get a master's in computer science. And uh, if I recall, one of my professors, he actually said back then, uh, you know, technology is there to basically give us paradise like conditions on earth. That's what he <laughs> said. Yeah. <laughs> And so uh, right after that, I, I moved uh, a little bit away from the technology space and, uh, and uh, joined uh, one of the top four strategy consulting companies, uh, worked a lot with either technology companies across Europe on their more strategic agenda or did a lot of business transformation, digital transformation for non-tech companies. So that's really my background, did that for, for over 10 years. And then uh, met Jean-Christophe, who's the founder, Jean-Christophe Zuffre, who is the founder of, uh, of Sensefly. And uh, that's how I got to Sensefly uh, uh, a bit more more than two years ago, and then evolved into a group uh, into a group kind of role in the Parrot Group. Awesome! And so you are you a software engineer? Like, are you like I am JavaScript? Actually, yeah, and, yeah, okay. yeah. It's it's been a long time since I coded, but that's yeah. my background. Hey, yeah. It's handy to have. It's like um, you, you can fill like a hybrid role, so I'm sure it helps with the product side of things sometimes. It does. It does. It helps to communicate with engineers to really understand, uh, you know, what are their dif difficulties and things like that. Absolutely. And so for the audience, so a lot of people might not be aware of this, but can you give us, can you tell us what is the relationship between Sensefly and Parrot? So Sensefly, uh, I mean, Sensefly was founded in 2010, right? And, and uh, back then really revolutionized, I think, the, a, the commercial drone industry, but mapping in specifics and, and changed the way people approach mapping from really like doing point to point measurements uh, to really going uh, to aerial mapping and, and photogrammetry and all that. So, so I think that was really the driving force that, that Sensefly kind of, the way to, Sensefly changed the way things were being done. Uh, also together with, uh, with a sister company, uh, uh, Pix4D. And that uh, interested or sparked the interest of, uh, of Parrot, who was back then uh, already in the drone space. So they had the AR, AR drone out and the AR2 drone out and uh, and then they invested into Sensefly in 2012 uh, a little bit later they invested in Pix4D and then uh, now both companies are uh, almost 100% owned 
by the Parrot Group. So majority ownership in the Parrot umbrella. Exactly, exactly. Cool. Well, that's, that's really interesting, yeah. And so we were talking uh, earlier, and I learned something new, and I don't know if I heard about this and I just forgot, but I was just, uh, I don't know what the right adjective is, but I was like not shocked, but just impressed. It was just um, eye-opening again to learn that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Parrot is going kind of full-blown into drones and like making that like the big like North Star um, uh, product line that they're going to be um, tackling. And so can you just give, like, give us a little background there? Because Parrot, I knew from living in France, you guys made like consumer electronics, like there was like a smart watering thing, like IOT device, um, these, these Bluetooth headphones called the Parrot Zeke that I used to see, you know, all these uh, businessmen wearing on the way, you know, on the Metro in Toulouse on the way to work, uh, you know, in France and, and elsewhere in Europe. And so, yeah, give us a little bit about the, the idea behind that. And, and is this a full blown, like Parrot is now straight up like a drone company? So absolutely, Parrot. We really look at Parrot as the end-to-end -end drone group out there. Yeah, that does everything from uh, the drones, obviously, to the sensors, to the software for the processing, uh, and we and we even have subsidiaries that do uh, kind of service with drones. Yeah, so we're really end-to-end. -end, we're doing the the entire spectrum of activities uh, that you find in the drone space. So Parrot, I mean, it was founded uh, in the 90s and, and really always had the DNA of a tech company, as you said. I mean, we had uh, hand, hand free kits for cars. We had, uh, we had a lot of different technologies, as you said, them. And we said now, uh, really, the growth industry that we're looking at is the drone industry. And I think we all agree on that. And, uh, and that's why we said, let's focus 100 percent of this and really do it right. Awesome. And so you guys, obviously, you sell recreational products you mentioned the um the ar drone that was like one of the first really successful drones like kind of indoor based that was sold in like best buy it was sold in uh, all the different uh, electronic stores around the world um, but now of course there's a big commercial focus and that's what you're focused on is the b2b side so can you tell us a little bit about i mean obviously we've got sensefly they make a number of products there's a multi-rotor there's a fixed wing um can you, can you kind of describe a little bit of the businesses and the customers who are using these products and, and how they're using them? And maybe you have um, some, I don't know, case study or story or something that you can tell just that illustrates that a little bit. Absolutely. So Sensla has always, uh, as you say, has always been a B2B drone company. So we've always focused uh, at Sensefly on, uh, on, on working with professional customers. And that really ranges across a, across a broad range of uh, industries, uh, mainly uh, in the mapping area and also in the inspection area. So especially for customers using mapping, you have like industries like mining, you have industries like uh, construction, you have uh, land mapping, you have converse conservation. You have agriculture, and then you have the whole inspection space, which really applies again to uh, construction, like and heavy industries, as well as like energy, telco, and uh, and these different industries. So, so this is where our customers come from, and uh, to name a couple, I mean, or to to talk a little bit about uh, the 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 interesting case studies we've had. I mean, one you've probably heard of is uh, we've mapped the entire island of Zanzibar with uh, with one of our customers. I didn't know that. I remember the Matterhorn mapping the Matterhorn that Sensefly EB video from like 2013. That thing was amazing. Exactly. And that, maybe that was in, in partnership with like Pix4D too or something, but. It's, it's always, I mean, most of what we do is in partnership with, a lot of what we do is in partnership with Pix4D because Sensefly does the image acquisition and then you need a photogrammetry software that uh, that basically uh, converts the images into 3D models for, for most of the use cases that we have, especially when you're talking about mapping. And uh, that's where Pix4D comes in and, and Pix4D is, I think, uh, the, the, the number one photogrammetry software out there. The so the Zanzibar project then what was that like that was like like the government or something like needed the whole island maps or something exactly or? the maps of Zanzibar had really gotten out of date and we had didn't have a very high resolution uh, and they said uh, well we need to map the island and we're looking at manned aircraft and other solutions uh, and then they realized okay maybe using drones this is going to be more effective and uh, and actually much more much cheaper. And so we did that uh, in, in uh, we helped them get started, uh, gave them units. The World Bank was also uh, heavily involved into that project. 
And uh, but at the end of the day, it was really also about educating uh, the local population, uh, the students from the university there to get into mapping projects and to to basically do the mapping themselves. Yeah? So we helped them get started. We provided obviously uh, uh, the units, but then the mapping work itself was done by by the locals, which I think is a great story. That is. Yeah, that's really cool. And. You know, when I think about EB, like to me, EB is like legendary in the in commercial drone ecosystem and in the history, the relatively short history. I mean, this is one of the products that really kind of pushed out photogrammetry to the masses, I think, and made it easy to use. It was one of the one of the first like hand launchable fixed wing, still easy to use, of course, but like, you know, you still had the laptop that you had to use with it. But like that was just like a stepping stones um, to get to where we, we where we are today. And I just, you know, EB has been such a strong product, strong brand in the commercial space. And so it's really cool to just have seen the evolution of it. I mean, I remember like there was only one version back in the day. Then you guys released like an ag version and you released uh, another version. And then you came out with the soda camera, which is a specific, you know, camera dedicated that you created for photogrammetry. So you guys keeping in that theme have just launched some new products. So can you tell us a little bit about those? I mean, what are we looking at here? We've got um, we've got a smaller one, and we've got a bigger one. <laughs> we got a smaller one and a bigger one, exactly. So as Pirate Business Business Solutions, we've uh, we've launched the Anafi Work, which is basically based on the Anafi uh, drone that was rela- released in uh, in June this year, and uh, it's it's the Anafi drone with uh, everything you need it you need to make it really a professional grade drone. Yeah? So to to it's the drone that any business can basically use to get started with drones and to to really get uh, actionable data and results out of their drones. So what does it what does it contain and what does it do? It's uh, it's the Anafi drone as I said, it has a it has an improved packaging, you get a nice bag with it. You get four batteries with it, which gives you a total flight time of 1 hour and uh, and 40 minutes, which is pretty cool. You can do a lot of uh, you can do a lot of flying with that. Well, you can do a ton with that, yeah. And uh, I mean the Anafi itself has a uh, it's a really good drone because it has a it has a very high resolution sensor despite its very, very very low weight. Uh, so you're talking 20 megapixels here, and at the same time, it's 320 grams, and that allows you to do really high quality imagery, pictures especially, but also videos, uh, and that's without obstructing, without da- putting anybody in danger. So you can fly over over cities depending on the legislation on the country you're in, etc. But uh, and and you're not you're not putting anybody at da- in danger, and at the same time the drone is very very quiet, mm. which also means that people don't feel harassed by the drone. That's so good. that's 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 pretty awesome. And we also put into it uh, um, a version uh, of Pix4D Pix4D model. So uh, so Pix4D model allows you to do 3D reconstruction. Uh, and uh, and basically map houses, map uh, uh, buildings, uh, and these type of things. Uh, put them into 3D. So it's an it's it's a it's a drone that's uh, that's very good from its performance perspective mm-hmm. uh, in in terms of resolution, etc. And at the same time, you can you can get started building 3D models, doing mapping and and things like that. Uh, and all of that for uh, 1099 bucks so it's really it's nice. really a very attractive offer and it's it's really there to inspire everybody to get to get going with drones to bring drones in their businesses if, if they haven't already and the 1099 so that includes like a license uh, for the, the pix4d model exactly it includes one year of pix4d model it includes as i said the four batteries the charger the drone itself uh, packaging etc so it's a it's a pretty neat package that is nice yeah and i guess you just need like there's an app for it like on the smartphone hook exactly, it up i'm you looking can, well i'm cheating because i'm looking at <laughs> i'm looking at the drone behind your uh, right shoulder right now exactly um and i'm actually so i um you know i'm familiar obviously you got to look at dji they're the juggernaut the behemoth whatever they're they're you know just everywhere the, the size of the Anafi seems even smaller than the Mavic, which is already pretty small. So that's excellent that you have a, an even smaller footprint. And so the arms fold in to make it more portable and everything as well? Exactly. It's okay. super portable. The arms fold in. It's, uh, as I said, 320 grams. So it's super light. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Great. So that's that's the smaller of the two uh, products sm- that we're talking about. So what's the bigger one? So the bigger one is uh, you mentioned the EB uh, a couple of minutes ago. And uh, basically, uh, I think the EB has really revolutionized uh, the mapping industry and the geospatial industry 
really a couple times over. I mean, when it started, it really made uh, mapping and photogrammetry approachable. Uh, then we introduced RTK on the EB in, uh, in 2014, I think that was, uh, with the EB RTK. So that allows you to get uh, your accuracy of the GPS basically to three centimeters versus the typical five meters that you get uh, when you when you have a non-RTK drone. Uh, so that was really a game changer because people didn't need to do ground control points uh, and stuff like that to to get their uh, to get their models calibrated anymore. Mm. And uh, and now uh, so then we we had the EB Plus which we released in 2016 with a flight time of 50, 59 minutes. You, you mentioned the Soda camera that was also one of the big innovations that we had really one sensor that was dedicated to doing photogrammetry work and doing mapping work. And uh, and now we're releasing the EBX yeah which is uh, EBX. which is super exciting yeah. Ooh, super exciting. Okay. So what is the EBX? Like is this like a hybrid version? Like, honestly, like right now um, just for the audience, I have no idea like what the EBX is. Right now I'm under NDA cuz we're recording this in a little bit in advance, but this is this is exciting. It is exciting. I mean, the EBX is basically it's a, it's a revolution on all the on all the different aspects of the EBR. Yeah? So uh, take the sensors. We've uh, we've talked about the soda sensor. Now we have we basically have a uh, have a, the EBX that comes with uh, three sensors, uh, three new sensors uh, uh, that are of, like swappable. Not that all are swappable, okay. and there's more sensors available. So all the historic sensors, the Parrot Sequoia, the soda, etc., soda corridor, they are all still. You can put them into an EBX, but you have three new sensors, and these are really exciting. So first, you have you have soda 3D. And that's, that's really a game changer because basically you take a soda camera and the soda camera uh, basically tilts from left to right. So rather than having Whoa. just nadir pictures, so pictures that look straight down, mm -hmm. you also have pictures looking left and right, which means, uh, when you do, when you do mapping, you also capture vertical surfaces. Wow. And okay. So you, you get the vertical surfaces. You have 3D models that reconstruct. You can fly over a city and basically, uh, perfectly reconstruct all the buildings all the skyscrapers uh that's amazing with, with textures on the vertical surfaces thank you thank you for doing this <laughs> this is very meaningful actually like okay i have to stop this and just like go on a tiny little rant so i've been in drones for like over five years photogrammetry has been the same almost throughout the last five years. Like photogrammetry is very high technology, very complex thing. And for the most part in the, in the terms and in the, in the view of an end user who wants to just get, you know, do photogrammetry to either get an ortho mosaic or a 3D model, it has been largely just kind of the same. Like sure, processing times have advanced, resolution has gone up, reconstruction accuracy has gone up, but like there haven't been big changes to the whole process. So this sounds incredibly interesting. So the, while the... While the while the drone is flying, it's kind of like its pattern to do its coverage. The camera is like going in multiple positions and just kind of like going back and forth as the drone flies, like left. Exactly. Uh, okay. That's exactly how it works. Yeah. Wow. And, and that uh, basically, so it can, when it looks to the left or when it looks to the right, it will look at the facades of buildings mm. rather than just looking at the tops of buildings. And that, uh, that changes everything, everything, as you say. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. And have you seen the data from this and it's like, Oh yeah, we have, uh, awesome. uh, we have a lot of, uh, right, a lot of samples. It. I can, I can Show me share some. those. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe I can put it on the, um, like some screenshots or whatever, uh, under the, under the absolutely. podcast, yeah, uh, I'll, on share, the website. I'll share some links. Yeah. Cool. We have a, we have a lot of uh, links actually available on Pix4D, so you can look into into Pix4D uh, and get it on their cloud and have the the three D models that were done with uh, Soda three D. Nice. Okay. Awesome. So we then, got two more sensors. To yeah, talk two about. more sensors to talk about. Exactly. So then we have uh, uh, Area X. That's basically uh, it's the other evolution of uh, of the Soda sensor. So Soda was a one inch twenty megapixel sensor, mm -hmm. and uh, that was already pretty good to do good photogrammetry work, right? It was a, I think it was a little bit of a revolution when it came out. Uh, so now we've increased the sensor size to an APS-C. So what does that mean? APS-C, that's the type of sensor size you get in a lot of, actually most of the DSLR cameras that you buy off the shelf today. So that means much higher image quality, much, my, uh, much more light that goes uh, onto the sensor, which allows you to really do mapping uh, for much longer periods of time. You can map in the dawn, you can map in the dusk, uh, the the way the the data you get back is uh, is much more precise, much more much more accurate uh, in the images. Uh, it reconstructs uh, 
very very well uh, so even better than than the reconstructions that we had uh, with this with the soda camera this episode of commercial drones fm is brought to you by fleer pretty much everyone in the commercial drone world knows about fleer's thermal imaging technologies and may even have a basic understanding of how their sensors work at Commercial Drones FM, we think this technology is deserving of the spotlight to reveal some of the incredible things thermal imaging drones can accomplish. Drones equipped with thermal imagers offer a way to see the world from a different perspective, which can help identify infrastructure problems, locate missing people, and increase safety and efficiency across a variety of industries. The value of thermal imaging for commercial drone operations is undeniable. So I want to use this podcast as a platform to dive deep into the world of heat and seek out the best practices and the unique use cases that make thermal imaging sensors the most drone-ready payload for commercial drone applications right next to RGB cameras. So join us over the coming months as we invite FLIR and their customers into our studio to discuss the technical and practical uses of their groundbreaking efforts in aerial thermal imagery. This episode of Commercial Drones FM is brought to you by Deveron UAS. Deveron UAS offers enterprise drone services for farmland across North America. I recently spoke with Bonduel, one of Deveron's largest customers. So my name is Jennifer Thompson. I work for Bonduel America's Long Life. We're a vegetable processor. Bonduel is a very large company with 54 plants in the world. Here in North America, we have 11 plants doing frozen and canned vegetables. So naturally, I wanted to know, how is Deveron helping one of the largest vegetable processors in the world by using drone technology? So we use Deveron to service and support our precision agricultural needs. For us, it's not easy to have our own or fly our own drones to gather crop data. So Devron is ready and available to work for us when needed. We fly thousands of acres and managing those acres. It just works very easily with them in our fast paced growing season. They're not just providing data, they're helping to solve issues and find solutions. Well, that's very important work, but what's your favorite crop to eat? My favorite crop to eat is sweet corn. I will eat sweet corn 365 days of the year. I'm not sure if I've ever eaten sweet corn yet that was monitored by drone. To learn more, visit DeveronUAS.com slash DronesFM and see for yourself how Deveron is leading collaboration in agriculture with drones. That's DeveronUAS.com slash DronesFM. Okay, back to the show. So the different, so that's, uh, and I'm just thinking, so the Soda 3D, then the one that we just talked about previously that moves left to right as the drone's flying, that one, the, the mechanical um, motor that moves it back and forth, that's embedded in the camera. So you're not going to get that with every single sensor. You're not going to get that motion. Exactly. Okay. It's it's uh, it's basically a Soda camera as you, as you know it from the EB+. That has been uh, that has been basically integrated in something a bigger bigger type of camera set that makes it move left and right. Gotcha. So you're not going to get that functionality with the Area X. No, no. Okay. The Area X, obviously, uh, you're talking a bigger a sensor, bigger, so yeah. you're talking a bigger camera, heavier camera. Uh, but it's uh, I think it's it's the first time that we really get such a such a big sensor into such a good sensor into into a fixed wing like the EB. Yeah. Yeah. Those can make uh, just a ton a ton of difference, especially. With the resolution, just the final quality uh, of the result. I mean, if you're looking for for um, high quality ortho mosaics, now I'm at, I'm imagining um, with the new EBX, does that have the option for RTK or is RTK standard? Um, on it this, is the, we, we basically continue having the options. So on the EB Plus, you could activate uh, RTK X Post, okay. or basically when you buy it, and that remains the same. So every EBX, gotcha. you can turn on RTK uh, if you want the high. Oh, accuracy. so you don't have to purchase it right off the bat. You can activate it later on. You can activate it later on. We give you a discount, obviously, if you purchase it right yeah. off the bat. Oh yeah, makes sense. Okay, and then so we've got one more sensor then we to got talk one about one more for this sensor, thing. yeah, which is also a really exciting one. Uh, it's called the Duet T. And Duet T, I mean, as the name suggests, it's basically an assembly of two sensors. So mm -hmm. we have once again uh, the soda sensor, which is with its 80 grams, basically gives you the, the RGB imagery facing down this time. So mm -hmm. no tilting left and right. 
and uh, and next to that we have a high resolution thermal sensor nice which that's is what a, i was hoping the t stand for, stood for <laughs> t stands for thermal exactly wow okay so with that you can get uh, you can get uh, uh, author mosaics you can get uh, um, 3d models with a very high uh, accuracy and precision that you get with a solar sensor except now they have the thermal information on top of them as well incredible I'm, yeah i'm just thinking of like so what is the so the application for this maybe like huge solar farms exactly solar farms you want to fly over industrial zones see where where heat is dissipating you want to fly over residential zones to check if uh, if uh, houses are properly isolated all these type of applications uh, that uh, where you where you really want to look at something and both have the rgb imagery and the uh, synchronized uh, thermal imagery or anything where you want to build a 3D model where where on the 3D model except uh, except of except that you see the instead of seeing the RGB imagery uh, you see how warm every surface of the 3D model is jeez okay this is big big stuff and did we even talk about uh, the ebx no, like the endurance like this uh, to save the best for last the whole platform carrying all these these the, awesome that can carry one of these awesome sensors at a time just so the audience is clear you have to swap them out but so yeah tell us the the ebx you buy one ebx and then you could get all three sensors if you wanted to and swap them out yeah obviously that's what we we want customers to get uh, to get multiple sensors yeah you have one sensor basically for each type of uh, job if you want the very high uh, if you want to have very high results that uh, some of our professional customers wants to want to get uh. but so talking about the ebx that itself so we have the sensor revolution with the, with all these new application cases that are coming out and um, the ebx itself also has been completely rewarmed i might say so we have a big increase in flight time. Basically now with the endurance activation, that's what we call it. You have to, you have to get it uh, separately from the, from the EBX, but you get an activation and that allows you to fly up to 90 minutes. So we are up 50% from the 59 minutes. Nice. We increase the coverage from 220 hectares to uh, 500 hectares. So given we're in the US, I think that? that's... Uh, 260 acres or something? 1,000... One, 1, oh, sorry. Uh, 1,235 <laughs> hectares. I went the wrong way on the conversion. Wait, 1,000... Roughly 1,000 acres. Over 1,235, one, I think, is the exact number in, in acres. Now, which, okay. is, uh, which is which is... Which is pretty big. A thousand I mean, you, acres in a flight. Wow. Over a thousand acres in a flight. Exactly. Nice. That's awesome. Okay. Dang. So you have the you have the you have the extended flight time. You have still the, hand launchable. It's still hand launchable. I mean, it it launches uh, smoother than ever. It has uh, it has also then a huge improvement on the usability on the landing side. On the landing side, uh, instead, uh, we basically reduce the space uh, you need for landing by uh, two thirds. Yeah? So it's uh, the approach zone is significantly reduced you can uh, you can land in much smaller areas now uh, and that uh, because of a new technology we call it steep landing and it basically the the plane uh, comes down uh, at a very steep angle uh, to the ground exactly. and then it flares at the very end and then like plops down it yeah it doesn't flare but it uh, okay. it just uh, touches very smoothly at the end uh, the ground yeah and, and feel... reduces the 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 need the, the need for bigger landing spaces I have a confession to make. I've never actually uh, flown an EB. Oh, you should. You should. <laughs> I know. Like, what is going on here? Um, I'm so familiar with the product. I feel like I have. Uh, I've held it in my hands many times, but actually never got to uh, got to launch one. But that's really cool. I mean, you see, like, the classic um, uh, version of this is, like, someone from, like, you know, that might work in, like, accounting or something at a business can come out, you know, wear their business clothes that they would wear to the office and, like, just, like, launch the, launch the drone. Uh, because fixed wing drones, like the whole the whole challenge there is like the accessibility factor. That's why the multi rotors are so popular. I mean, as everybody knows, is they're just easy. You just press a button and it takes off. But with this, it involves a little bit more coordination. You got to find a takeoff spot, a landing zone with a fixed wing drone, and so that's something that EB always did incredibly well because anyone can do it. And now that the 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 takeoff zone is even um, you know more small that you have to worry about, that just makes it that much more accessible so oh, yeah the, the takeoff and landing are, um, are much easier uh the, the product is is super easy to use is super versatile at the same time and uh and it's also uh, much more durable i mean 
EBs were durable before. I mean, we just uh, we just released a blog post on our, on our Waypoint blog about one of our customers, I think in Uruguay, who did a thousand flights on his EB. Uh, so on, wow. on one unit, one thousand flights. But uh, it's like a foam fuselage kind of like I don't know what the it's not foam. It's called it's, EPP. There we go. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I don't want to diminish what it actually is, but yeah, it, it to, yeah, it's like so a, it's, a, it's a very softer, durable, durable. It's a durable, uh, slightly soft, but also very <laughs> strong material that we use there. Nice. And we we took that. I mean, we also took the durability to the next level with the EBX. Yeah. So now it has inside. It has a it has a fuselage that basically contains all the important things like the autopilot, where the cameras get inserted in the the engine, etc. And, uh, and, and so that's, that's more, more, more robust per se, but also the, the underbody now is, is also made with a new material. So you can land a hundred times over on a land, on, on a mine site in, in gravel basically, and it won't be an issue. Very important. Yeah. And, uh, and the whole concept is much more modular. Yeah? So if you, if you're one of those persons that does like a thousand flights, there's parts after 100 hours that you need to replace. Mm -hmm. These are easily replaceable now. Yeah? So no more, uh, yeah, it, it's just basically a couple of, scr of screws and you can, for example, change a, change a pitot tube. Yeah. Cool. Really exciting. Um, that's, those are some great, uh, great improvements. Now, uh, there is another product that you guys sell, the Albris. I asked the commercial drones FM audience if they had any questions. And there was one specifically about this product and is there potentially or can you share any type of potential ref, like product line refresh or upgrade and the specific concern was that the sensor was maybe a little bit small for these days like now you see that there's these really nice high resolution sensors on like the anafi um is there anything planned or can you share anything about the albris line uh, for any upcoming or impending improvements to that so I cannot, and I cannot share obviously the 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 future long term roadmap. I mean, we've been working really hard on uh, on the EBX for the last uh, year, over a year, I think, uh, where we really uh, made that product uh, the next thing. So I can I, I can uh, I can divulge that it's not going to be a new big multi road in the next six months, as you can imagine. Mm. But uh, uh, the Albris, uh, I, mean, I think the Albris continues to stay a very relevant drone, yeah, especially because it combines the thermal imagery, the 40 megapixel uh, 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 imagery from the in the RGB. It's, 40. it's yeah, it's 40 megapixels. Nice, it okay. can look up. It's still used a lot for bridge inspections. Uh, for example, I mean the the Minnesota Department of uh, Transportation they use it uh, for the bri bridge inspections. So underneath the bridge underneath as well, the bridge, looking yeah, straight yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's basically they 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 used to use uh, what you call snooper trucks. So these are basically trucks that uh, have an arm, and the arm basically bends under the bridge. Oh, it wraps underneath it from wraps, above. Exactly, <laughs> uh, which means you have to, you know, you have to stop traffic. You have to, uh, you have to close the bridge for the time of the inspection. It's a super kind of cumbersome for everybody. And now they they're using, for example, they're one of the big customers that we have on the Arbis, and they're doing the the bridge inspection with the Arbridge in basically no downtime for the bridge. And uh, and uh, I think they saved something like two thirds of the of the cost uh, at the same time. Very cool. So the Orbis remains relevant. You have the Orbis really as the as the high end uh, multi rotor drone that uh, that we have in the portfolio, and the Anafi now uh, the Anafi work uh, that is really the that is really more the I might say entry level, but it's more than entry level. Uh, it's a it's yeah. a very good drone already to get everybody started and to have the drone that you can use in every business situation. And I even have to say, like some of the promo videos I've seen of just like the recreational version with like the zoom that it has also look like really freaking cool. So very nice. Um, great to see these updates. Um, Sensefly been around since 2010. I mean, that's an eternity. It's almost coming up on like a 10 year anniversary in like the next like year and a half or so. So. Very, very cool. Um, really excited to to start hearing about you know the customers in the field using these new updates to the to the Anafi and to the EBX. Um, I'll be very interested to see the data. So please do share that with me, and then I we'll will. post it on the website. Um, if you guys that are listening, if you want to learn more about Parrot and Sensefly go to parrot.com and sensefly.com respectively. You can also find them on Twitter, I'm sure, at the exact same handles. So um, JT, uh, Jean Thomas, it was great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, we'll be watching and looking forward to what you guys come out with next. Yeah, thank you, Ian. It was really a pleasure talking with you. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. 
Excellent. Likewise. So we are now going to cut off the mics, everyone. Fly safe. Cheers. <laughs>